Hi guys and welcome back. So um, in the last um, video I was talking about the cerebral cortex and I was just explaining how um, you have these primary uh, so primary cortices, the auditory, the visual and the somatosensory um, and they all receive information from the senses. Now we also have what's called the primary motor cortex and it's in purple here. Now the, the primary motor cortex, rather than receiving information from the senses, it actually transmits messages um, and to the motors, to our voluntary skeletal muscles. So if, for instance, if you decided that you wanted to move your hand and scratch your nose, your primary motor cortex would help you coordinate those movements. Here's an image of um, a human chimpanzee, cat and a rat, and it's, in this image you'll notice that it shows you the three areas, the association areas, the sensory areas, and the motor areas. Just have a quick look. Compare the amount of association area between the human, the chimpanzee, the cat, and the mouse. As you go down um, to the lower level mammals, what do you notice about the amount of association areas? Compare this to the amount of primary motor area in each of the um, animals. Compare this to the amount of sensory areas in each of the mammals. Why do you think that rats and cats have a far larger amount of cerebral cortex dedicated to sensory areas compared to, say, a chimpanzee or a human? Right, now what I want to do is I want to move on and I want to talk about the longitudinal fissure. Oh, sorry, the cerebral hemispheres. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, the cerebral hem there are two cerebral hemispheres, and um, they're divided by something called the longitudinal fissure. It's called the longitudinal fissure because it's running longitudinally, and it's also quite long. Um, and it's a fissure because it's kind of like a, um, a valley in the brain. Now, all of these valleys here, if you can see where my mouse is, those are all fissures as well. They're not as major, obviously, as this longitudinal fissure, and that's the name of this one. This fissure here is called the longitudinal fissure. These bumps are called the gyrus, um, and some of these bumps have special names because they seem to appear um, in the same places and help us to differentiate between the lobes, but we'll go through that later. The cerebral hemispheres themselves, um, we will cover their functions um, a little later in the course, but basically there are certain similarities between them. The first are the same size, they have the same shape, the same structure, and many of the functions are the same on both sides. So your motor area in your left cerebral hemisphere will be the same as the motor area in your right cerebral hemisphere. However, there are some key differences. The first difference is what we call lateralization of function. What this basically means is that the left hemisphere of your brain receives and controls the right side of your body. So if you um, are touching a, um, a furry ant with your right hand, it will, that information will travel to the left side of your brain and vice versa. The only exception to this is probably language. Language processing generally occurs in the left hemisphere for most people, um, and spatial and visual thinking generally occurs in the right hemisphere. And again, we'll be discussing this later on in the course. The last thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is the corpus callosum. Now, the corpus callosum is a bundle of nerve fibers which actually allows communication between the two hemispheres of the brain. Um, it's really important that you don't on the exam describe the corpus callosum as transmitting the information between the two hemispheres of the brain. The corpus callosum itself doesn't transmit anything, it just allows the information to travel through. I liken this to a bridge. If you are driving across a bridge, it's not the bridge that's driving you over itself, it's your car that's um, travelling across. Um, the bridge enables you to travel across, and the same applies to the corpus callosum. It doesn't actually transmit the information, but it allows the information to be transmitted. Okay, guys, um, that's all I have to say in the cerebral cortex and the corpus callosum. Um, see you later.